Hello, uh, welcome to today's lesson, 3.3. What we're doing today is uh, we're going to learn how to graph tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So far we've learned how to graph sine and cosine, and now we're going to learn the other four trig ratios. Now we're going to learn them uh, how to graph cosecant based on what we know of sine. So if we have the sine curve, we have to think about what we know about the relationship between these. And we know cosecant is 1 over sine of theta. Now, what we know is 1 over 0 is undefined. So when is sine of theta 0? Well, sine of theta is 0 here, 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 and it keeps going on. So, it's, so our graph of cosecant it's going to be undefined at those points. So what I'm going to do is draw these vertical lines that we call asymptotes. What, th what these do is they show us that cosecant can't possibly pass through these lines. Now, uh, let's put in some more points. What happens when sine of theta is 1? When sine of theta is 1, cosecant is 1. So let's go to the points where sine is 1, because cosecant will be 1 also. Also, when sine is negative 1, cosecant is negative 1. So those three points are part of our cosecant graph. Now, if sine is 1 half, which occurs here, 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 and would be here. Now at, at those points, maybe I should use another color for those. At those points, let's see how cosecant reacts. What's 1 over 1 half? Well, 1 divided by 1 half is 1 times 2 over 1, which is 2. So when uh, when sine is 1 half, cosecant is 2. And likewise, when sine is negative 1 half, cosecant would be negative 2. Now, if we could continue putting more points in when sine is 1 third, it would be 3. And uh, negative third, it would be 3 negative 3, uh, which is further down. But what it does is it makes a graph that looks like this. Now, it never crosses this asymptote. It goes closer and closer to it, but never touches it. And this red part is our graph for cosecant. All right, now take a second and try to draw, if you can, y equals 4 plus 2 cosecant to 5 theta minus 12. All right, hopefully people have given it a shot. Uh, we do the same thing that we did before. Let's go up 4. And draw a horizontal line. And now we go up two and down two from that to find our upper bound and lower bound of our sine function. Now this five is a horizontal shrink by a factor of five, so that's the period will be 360 divided by five, which I believe is 72. Yep. So, uh, and we start 12 to the right. So 12, 24, 36, 48, uh, 60, 72 would be about here. So sine would start in the middle, end in the middle, it would cross in the middle, go to the top, and the bottom. Now I'm going to draw this one as a dotted line because that's not actually the function we're looking for. 
Now, what I want to do here is wherever it crosses the sinusoidal axis, I'm going to draw a vertical asymptote. All right, so now once we have our vertical asymptotes in place, I can move this one over a little bit. Now we look at our peaks, and now I'm going to draw in blue my cosecant graph. And then we look at the, the low points of sine and draw our cosecant graph. So it'll keep going to the right and to the left, but the blue graph is really what we're concerned about. Now try this one on your own. 3 plus 2 cosecant to 4 theta plus 5. If we go up 3, two up, two down. We're going five to the left. Uh, 360 divided by four is 90, so we're going to do 85 out here. And that would be my sine function, or something like it. And now, wherever it crosses the sinusoidal axis, I'm going to draw my vertical asymptotes. And uh, now I start at my peaks and my valleys and draw my cosecant graph. There you go. Hopefully you guys understand how to draw cosecant graphs now. Now we'd move to secant. Now secant is the same thing, but instead of doing the graph with uh, sine, secant uses cosine. So we pretty much do the same thing. We look at the cosine graph, draw our vertical asymptotes then I'll even I should probably do one over here too and then at every peak and valley we can draw our graph so this is what the basic function of secant will look like so now let's do that for 1 plus 3 secant of 2 theta minus 4. So 1, so you ch pause the video and try this on your own. So first I graph the sinusoidal axis, the upper bound and the lower bound. Now we go 4 to the right. It's going to do a full rotation by the time it gets to 180. So 180 is going to be pretty far away from 4. And now it's cosine, so it's going to start at the top, end on the top, the middle will be on the bottom, and it'll be on the sinusoidal axis at these two points. So it looks something like this. So I'll draw my vertical asymptotes. There you go. And here is my graph for secant in blue. All right, now we're going to investigate about our tangent and uh, 
cotangent graphs. Now to do so, we have to think a little bit about sine and cosine. Now if I have this spot on my unit circle, this side is my y, this side is my x, so sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, and tangent is y over x. Now do you see a relationship between these? One thing that you could notice is that um, uh, tangent is y over x, which is the same thing as yr over xr, which is kind of something weird to say, but uh, um, we could say that because r divided by r can would cancel out, so these two are equivalent, which also tells us that y over r times r over x would be equivalent to the step above it. And y over r divided by x over r uh, would also be equivalent to the previous statement, which is the same thing as y over r divided by x over r. That's just another way of writing it. Now remember, y over r is sine of theta. x over r is cosine of theta. So we just proved that the tangent of theta is equal to the sine of theta over cosine of theta. Now we're going to be getting into proofs like this a lot more as we go along. But, uh, but uh, that just shows that... Um, a new relationship that we have between tangent, sine, and cosine. Now cotangent, it just flips that around. So cotangent of theta is cosine over sine. So we need to figure out when these functions will equal zero and when they will be undefined. So let's look at that for both of these. Now a function is zero if their numerator equals zero and it's undefined if the denominator equals zero. So uh, tangent is zero when sine is zero, but cotangent would be undefined as when sine is zero. So let's label all the points where sine will be zero. Well, it will be at zero, 180, 360, and so on and so on. Uh, and it would also be in the negative direction. So we could just say that it's 180 times n, given that n is some integer. Now, that would be the same for when cotangent is undefined, because when sine is 0, this function is undefined. So we could do 0, 180, so on and so on. Really, just 180n is an equation that covers all of it. Now, for this function to be undefined, cosine has to be 0. So that would be like 90, 270, 540, so on and so on. So with this, we could say it's 90 plus 180n where n, again, is an integer. So 90 plus 180n would give us all of the values where cotangent would equal 0. So let's see what this looks like on a graph. So if we look at tangent, tangent is 0 at 0, 180, 360, and so on and so on. And it's undefined at 90, 270, 450, negative 90. So the graph of tangent actually looks like this. It starts at the bottom, comes up, passes through, and then keeps going up. Starts in the bottom again, passes through, keeps going up. One thing that you can notice about tangent is its period is a little bit different. How long does it take to do a complete rotation? Well, now it does two rotations, two full cycles by the time it gets to 360. One, two cycles. So it starts repeating itself 180 degrees. So the period for tangent is actually 180. All right, let's graph cotangent. Now, cotangent is undefined at zero. 
uh, 180, 360. I have to fix that first line. Just so it doesn't look so wonky. All right, here we go. Now uh, it's find at zero or at 90 and uh, 270 by being zero. So now cotangent starts at the top. So it's going in kind of the opposite direction that tangent is. So it keeps doing this to the right and to the left. And again, this one has a period of 180 degrees also. So hopefully you guys were able to be able to uh, follow how to graph tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. And here's your homework. Good luck.